steps of my king. All right, everyone, welcome to this episode of Idleman Unplugged, uh, talking about a very important, controversial topic for sure. You know, the divide in our nation, you know, what's going on. Um, and you'll see, uh, and it depends when you're watching this. I mean, so much can change. I'm actually recording this August 4th, actually, August 4th, 2023. Uh, Trump just got another major indictment. I believe he's showing up in court yesterday um, in Washington, D.C. The governor of Florida, DeSantis, just announced that he will debate Gavin Newsom. Not sure why he's moving himself from the national platform to, you know, state to state platform. Um, and he's, you know, he's got a lot of great points that how Florida handled COVID and how they recouped, um, will really, I mean, that's the debate. You look at where California's at and that's where I live. I live actually in Los Angeles County, believe it or not. And so just trying to help people explain what's going on. I know there's, there's those on the far side of each political spectrum that it doesn't matter what you say. They've already made up their mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. And, uh, but I'm trying to reach those in the middle. There's a lot of people in the middle that are open and want to understand really what in the world is going on. In order to do this, you have to go back and do a quick history lesson. Um, you know, you've got Republicans, you've got Democrats and you've got independents. You know, those what they would consider in the middle. They don't want to gravitate toward either party. And, um, the, the hard thing about that is, you know, we don't, we're, we're not strong enough yet to have a third party, I don't believe. And so those people can take votes, obviously from, from the other, one of the other parties. And you had in our nation, um, different type of political setups. You know, there's uh, the Whigs and the Tories and things like that. Um, and they actually, if you look at the early debates, which I have, a lot of it is on tax and taxation, uh, representation, you know, the Bill of Rights, uh, freedom of speech. And it was pretty, they're pretty cordial. They had a fear of God. They would, <laughs> it would be unthinkable, unthinkable to uh, even debate the moral issues uh, that we are faced with today in our country. Uh, the, the perversion and the sexual sin, it wouldn't even, it, it's, and so my point is, it, things used to be policy issues, uh, spending, uh, the, the control of government versus, um, given to the people, states' rights, you know, the right of the state versus the federal level. The federal, believe it or not, the federal level was not supposed to govern the states. The states were supposed to govern themselves constitutionally. And then the, the federal aspect, which you would, you consider the federal government would help with the, all of the states in regard to national security, things like that. They weren't supposed to come in and impose different things. That's why you would move to a certain state, uh, and you would want what that state believes. So you have the liberal states, more the conservative states. And then also, um, in, in, in working in that, um, you, you see, for example, why the courts, the Supreme Courts gave the issue of abortion back to the state for this very reason. And they understand, now I have a lot to say on that, but they understand that the states, uh, they, they had state constitutions. Uh, and many early states in their constitution said that you couldn't even run for office unless you believed in God, believe it or not. And the reason is, is because your moral, your moral uh, compass dictates how you will legislate. Will our laws line up with God's word or will our laws line up with darkness and perversion? You know, that's, that's why it was so important to fear God. And our constitution was written for a holy and, 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 uh, and, and religious people. One of the founders would say it, it has no bearing unless it is applied in that context. So, you know, give, give a lot of history. You've had different political parties for that very reason. It's healthy debates and you know you start with George Washington of course and you work work your way to through the presidents and then you get to Abraham Lincoln and we did have something in our nation that all of us are aware of you know known as slavery and uh believe it or not a lot of the founding fathers didn't believe in it uh 50% I think or so fought against it and you can read actually you can download my book One Nation Above God One Nation Above God uh, free of charge at our church website, westsidechristianfellowship.org, westsidechristianfellowship.org, One Nation Above God. You can download it there free. Of course, it's available on other platforms, but not for free. Um, and so we want to offer that to people. And you can look at all the founding fathers 
who abhorred the practice of slavery. And I go into a lot of other details on a lot of different topics on how we can get back on track, how our nation was first established. And so, yeah, this obviously this big divide. Um, a lot of people don't know there were black slave owners as well. Um, it wasn't just a white issue. It was uh, really what it was, was an upper middle class wealthy issue that they would hire and uh, not hire, but they would take it by slaves and then they would have the slaves uh, work on the properties, you know, much like um, indentured servants back in the time of, of the Bible. And that's why, you know, people say the Bible teaches slavery or encourage. No, it doesn't. It talks about, you know, if I had a debt, I, I couldn't just go put on MasterCard back then. I had to be an indentured servant. I had to work off. And then, of course, the slaves got taken from their land. It was just atrocities. It was terrible because anytime good is working, so is evil. So, so to me, that's no surprise whatsoever. Um, and so because of that, there was a national uprising um, last, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, I finished um, General Lee's, no, it wasn't Lee, it was Grant, uh, G- General Grant's biography, who fought on the side of freeing the slaves and, of course, had uh, Lee, General Lee surrounded and Lee eventually, um, um, you know, surrendered. And it really never broke the, the the slavery issue over our nation because it's a it's a it's a sin issue. It's not a skin issue. It's a sin issue. And unless people get right with the Lord, and I could even take some time to go through the revivals that broke out among the Confederate armies, uh, and 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 uh, those also up up in the north, and and how God was moving in those areas it was incredible. So anyway, a man by the name of Abraham Lincoln comes on the scene, and. Uh, what he does, obviously, many of you know the Emancipation Proclamation. It's always hard for me to say. And freeing of the slaves. He fought for that. Ultimately, did give his life for it. I think a lot of people don't remember that. And he actually, I believe that's when the Republican Party was formed. So get get in right now, get all the preconceived ideas out of your mind about what you think of Democrats or what you think of Republicans. Let me just tell you the facts. Okay. We're in our society. We're so offended by the facts and it's just sad to watch how weak we've become. So the facts are, um, Lincoln was, I believe his Republican party just established the platform was anti-slavery and the Democrats were actually for slavery. You can trace the KKK back to that. So anyway, I think we just need to get away from, you know, Republicans are, are, um, racist and enslaved. No, actually, if you go back and do your history, it's it's pretty interesting. And then, of course, what happened, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., um, you know, the, he, when he, he said the church must be reminded that it's not the master or the servant of the state, it is the conscience of the state, goes on to say we must recapture our prophetic zeal or we'll become an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority from Birmingham jail. And you see them, the, the, then, and the Democrat Party realized you know, we've got to change course here. And so it, it shifted and it shifted, began to embrace, uh, and rightly so, even the word liberal back then was not really a bad word, liberal, uh, not wanting to overspend different things. And so it shifted. And then the Democratic Party, you know, with Kennedy, of course, and, and they would, um, it was their, their stance then became, um, you know, they realized we've got to change something. Their stance then became, um, you know, we, we're for the working man, you know, the, the, the blue collar versus white collar. We're for the working man. We're for, for minorities. Um, and again, good causes for sure. And then the Republicans, uh, if you re- research it a little bit more, they, they kind of gravitated towards fiscal responsibility. That's where the word conservative comes in. They want to be conservative in their spending, conservative in their values. And so they, Drifted over to not drifted, I guess they would, they became, um, they became more for the upper middle class. Um, wealthy people became more conservative because they saw the wisdom from their, their perspective on those values. And then obviously, um, the Republican party was more, um, getting more votes and, and, and its support from corporations. Um, and corporations, you know, even with the tax code and why do they get corp, why do corporations get breaks? And this, I don't understand. Well, you have to, if you, you have to understand that corporations, what they do affects what happens to us the, at the bottom end here, just the, the middleman. Uh, and so the corporation, the more freedoms they have, the more actually you will benefit 
because the cost of living will be less. You start to tax, increase these taxes, uh, tax, um, you know, taxing the corporations more, taxing the wealthy, they'll just start to pull back and it's going to actually really affect us. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, you know, they're, they're, when Trump was famous for saying about, I, rig- I, I know the system, you know, Hillary, Bill, I use the system. What he was talking about is um, depreciation. So you can have assets and they're depreciating. And so you get to write that off or you have um, different different things in, in your corporation. You can have a loss. Really, there's a gain, but you can have a loss based on these different things. So your taxes aren't as high. So it's not illegal. Um, initially, those things started off uh, good because, hey, let's give these corporations a break here so they can pass on the savings to those like us. So, and then of course, it just gets convoluted. It it it, it grows. And you've got the Nixon debacle and then you've got Ronald Reagan coming on the scene and strong Republican values. And uh, then Bush, of course, uh, and then the, and then then Clinton. So it's always it's usually what usually happens is Republicans and then something happens in our nation, the economy, gas, whatever. And they they blame this group. And then oh, let's give Democrats a chance with Bill Clinton. And uh, oh, that's not working. Let's give the Republicans a chance with Bush. That's not working. Let's give um, Obama a chance, you know, uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Let's give him a chance. And let's and then, you know, you open the door for for Trump. Uh, and then where we find ourselves after that with Biden. Now, regardless of your view, uh, whether he just alienated so many people, you know, even Christians are divided. Uh, obviously, we know there were uh, shenanigans in the election. No, no question in my mind whatsoever in the 2020 election, because there's always shenanigans for sure, people would say. But was it enough to tilt the scale in all those key states, you know, and then um, that's why Trump is actually in trouble supposedly in trouble now on this indictment is he, he, you know, when he called, I would have, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling Georgia and not saying fine 22,000 votes, like make stuff up, manipulates like, Hey dude, what happened? Biden had this huge drop and things were done in the dark, you know, wh- find out what's going on. And so see how they use this stuff to just really push an agenda. They'll, they'll lie, they'll manipulate. They don't care power at any cost. Forget about integrity. And uh, that it's really sad to see. And so uh, even on January 6th, you can see there was there's people planted in there. Uh, there were Trump supporters who didn't do what they should have done. There was uh, Department of Justice or CIA or, you know, there's so, so many things. I could do a whole podcast on this that are alarming and confusing. And it makes you wonder, but to blame Trump on that, especially when you go back and you look at his tr- tweet and says, I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you not to be violent. Don't be violent. But he still is going to challenge the election, challenge what Pence is doing. And so if it, if it wasn't for the fact that they're so fearful of this guy, uh, they wouldn't be going through all this. And that's really what this is about. Now, let's talk about this DeSantis and, um, and uh, Newsom, my prediction, even with Trump, again, we're so far, you know, we're a year away from really seeing what's going to happen. You know, if Trump is actually, um, if he is charged uh, and, he, and, he, and there's a felony, I mean, so many millions of Americans are going to see right through it. You know, I, I think it's more of a martyr mentality than anything else. Um, they are going to... Um, well, let me let me backtrack a little bit. If he is charged and there's a felony, I, I don't think, you know... He can't even run. So that's kind of their goal. That's the whole goal. Get rid of him. Uh, it's, it's, re- and let's keep Biden in there, which makes no sense to me. It's really the, the puppet master at this point, unless you're, I hope you're aware of that. And I just, I, I just don't understand. It just, we have lost our moral direction, our moral compass, and, and we're in the debacle that we are in. That's why Christians, business as usual is not going to cut it anymore. You need to get back to praying and fasting and truly seeking the heart of God and making him your priority. Okay, that's really going to be the key and that, that's going to be our strength going forward. So you have, and again, if the election is on the up and up, um, but the bar- ballot harvesting, I don't have time to go into that. What that is, you can go around and collect ballots. Um, the person doesn't have to come in and show it. Uh, jumping ahead of the game. Um, there's going to be a lot of shenanigans, I believe, um, primarily on one side of, a, on one polit- on the side of one political party. Uh, I will remain silent on that right now. But with Newsom and, uh, DeSantis, you could see that. You could see that that's going to be the battle, possibly, if Trump is indicted. Not well, he's indicted, but if he's charged. And, uh, I, I don't think there's any way around becoming a felon. 
uh, running for office. But then people ask me, you know, um, you know, what, what, what's, I mean, we, nobody know. So just be careful. I mean, there's some, what they call prophetic voices, uh, saying some things. And it's a couple of guys who said that Trump will run, Trump will win. Um, and he, this guy, I know he's been dead on before. And so I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't dance in those waters or tippy toe because that's it just unless God really shares it on my heart, I, I don't I'm I stay away from, you know, thus say it the Lord because we can get in trouble. And so let's say, you know, there's so many different scenarios. Uh, DeSantis and, and uh, Newsom, it would I would be, I think, pretty close. A lot would depend on their, um, you know, their vice president, their running mate. If Newsom, I'm sorry, if um, DeSantis could pick up uh, Kennedy. Mm, boy, that might stir the water there. Or let's say Trump is, um, you know, uh, the candidate and somehow, you know, all this is put to the side because you can do that. You can keep delaying or postponing. He's a candidate. It all depends on what happens at the polls, uh, the amount of honesty, uh, the lack of, of, of shenanigans or the, the manipulation of election results. Um, key states, you know, those, those three or four key states, you can Google that if you're interested on those. It's, it's anybody's guess, but thank God, God's sovereignty is my sanity. And that should be your sanity as well. God's sovereignty is my sanity. And that's the only way we're going to get through. Only God knows what's going to happen. Um, my, the main point of this video was just do a quick 20 minute video, explain the different parties. And okay, finally got to the point here. I want to get, get to. So. Why it's so divided is either side, you know, like I'm a Republican and I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not open to the other side. Um, and the D Democrats are far worse in this area. I'm just, I'm just being truthful here. Like the, they, they'll lie. Many, many, many will lie. It doesn't matter. You know, we cannot have a certain person in office and whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I'm not willing to look at the facts. And so you also have kingdoms colliding, I believe. People, you know, kingdoms colliding, light and darkness. Now, people might say, well, look at Trump's attitude, Jane. Look at dissent. Nobody's perfect. Oh, how can you say that? Well, a couple things you have to remember. I don't care if Mickey Mouse is running for office. I'm looking at principles n over the person. Now, it would be great if Jesus Christ was running for office. It would be great if we had a Billy Graham, uh, who was our president, who knew, you know, uh, policy and who knew, you know, how to deal with nations and who was tough. Oh, that would be awesome. But because we don't have that, and of course it is good to pick, you know, like someone like um, DeSantis, or there's another guy coming up in the Rep Republican ranks. I can't say his name. Starts with a V, long last name, really like what he has uh, to say as well. Who knows where he'll end up? Maybe VP or something pick. So anyway, um, you've got this, this, this side of it um, where I'm looking at policy. So let's, let's remove names that offend you. Just, just get rid of names. Policy. Policy. How is the policy affecting my kids and your kids and our grandkids in the future direction of this nation? Policy over personality. Okay. Even, I would say even over character because they can appoint certain people in positions of office that have the character character to fulfill their duties. And so what is the policy on our borders? Are they going to secure our borders? Are they going to really go after the sex traffickers? That's who I want in office. Uh, what about dealing with Russia and China and, and having a strong military? That's who I want in office. Who's going to truly fight the fentanyl and the addiction crisis? That's who I want in office. Uh, who is going to deal with the alarming, skyrocketing r uh, rise in sex trafficking? That's who I want in office. And on that note, Biden's silence is alarming on this issue. And the silence of most Democrats is is alarming. It really makes me wonder, wonder, where is your heart in all of this? Where, where, where what is, are you so you, you hate Trump so much or Republicans so much that you're willing to compromise and allow little children to be hurt. I, I'm, it, I'm, it's, I'm just sick of all of this. And that's why I'm looking for policy. Put in Donald Duck. Just give me policy. OK. And what is the policy with 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 the government governmental overreach and control? 
What's our policy on giving our sovereignty to the World Health Organization? Uh, working with Davos, working with with these these Blackstone and these major corporations and Soros, and are they on their side? Because if they're on their side, we've got a big problem on our hands. And so you can see that, yes, kingdoms are colliding. The enemy of our soul, the, the demonic realm, wants a certain policy in place. And he is working like on overtime. All hell is on his side to get certain policies in place. Uh, what I, I want someone in office who's going to say, this is perversion, what we're allowing in our schools. How dare you, Governor Newsom, allowing and promoting sexual sin to these little kids? It, it's alarming. So again, I want somebody who's going to fight these perversions, uh, increase, in, encourage our security, look at, at, at America's well-being, and first and foremost, begin to seek God like never before. They might not, but at least, at least if they point our direct, our nation back in the direction of fearing God, uh, it could be a very, very good thing. So anyway, just want to give you a, a quick uh, synopsis of both parties, what's going on now. And my prediction um, is, I don't have a prediction at this point. I can really see, you know, because Trump has been through more than any other president times 10 for sure. And obviously it seems like, you know, does God's God's sovereign. And uh, if God wants him to get into office, uh, I think that will happen. Now, could it be that hopefully this breaks him, humbles him, and he is um, really a changed man? That's my hope and prayer too as well. And then could it be a DeSantis versus a Newsom? Possibly. I don't see how Biden's going to uh, make it into another four years or run again a year from now. Kamala Harris, don't, I, I personally don't see that. So I see it could be, it could be a Trump versus Newsom, uh, a DeSantis versus Newsom, or I might be, I might be shocked. It could be Biden running again. But remember, remember, it's not him. It's a puppet masters. And we are truly in in a battle for the soul of our nation. Thank you for listening to this episode of Eidelman Unplugged. 